Well, good evening, Levine Baptist Church. Welcome back. Tonight's going to be fun. It's every time I've attended this, it's just fun. So we're going to do nothing but report back tonight. We're going to hear from Christian Challenge. We're going to hear from the youth. We're going to hear from Audrey. We're just going to hear from all kinds of stuff that God's been doing. And that is great stuff to hear. And that's really something we probably should do just a touch more often. Because we talk about working and we talk about doing stuff for God, then people are doing it and nobody knows about it unless you were involved in that ministry. So it's just a, a, a great, a great evening. I'm, I'm thoroughly looking forward to it. I want to open up this, our service this evening with uh, Psalm 46. Verse 10 is one of my favorites. I'm going to read verse 10 and 11. It says, he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And this is a time where we're going to be kind of still for a little bit and hear how God has been with us and with the various groups and everything they've been doing. So with that, Caesar. Let's get this crowd warmed up. Going. Amen. Let's, uh, church, how about we stand up and let's continue to worship the Lord this evening now. Amen. Join me because I have been sick for a couple of days with this congestion. Had a fever on Friday, so please help me. Pray for me. Can have a seat real quick. Hey, a uh, couple of announcements. Don't forget this Saturday is uh, Gary Dodrell's Celebration of Life over at South Peoria Baptist at 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, and then uh, tomorrow, the church office will be 
closed, but we'll be taking phone calls and emails. And so if you need to be able to uh, get with the church office, uh, phone calls and emails will get you uh, tomorrow. And then Tuesday, the office is closed and everything's back to normal on Wednesday. Hey, uh, how this is going to go tonight uh, is we'll have VBS report back video, and then we'll have kids camp. So VBS first, kids camp next, Audrey next, college Zona next, and then youth Zona at the end. So VBS, kids camp, Audrey, college Zona. There you go. All right. Why don't you join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you. We thank you for everything. We thank you for what you're doing, God, in our lives. God, you're so faithful and you're so good. Uh, Lord, we love to see how you are making your name great in and through our people's lives. God, we're thankful for the faithful obedience uh, to serve uh, of those who are here tonight, who are, um, who are represented tonight. Uh, Lord, we're so thankful. Um, God, we pray that you continue to do more. Continue to do more in the hearts and lives of this church. Uh, Lord, that your name and your renown may be known more and more here in Levine and around the world. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen.
know if I was going to say anything, but we don't need to say much because I want to save it for all the other stuff. But um, Vacation Bible School is great. We had an average of 130 kids um, every day, about 80 some volunteers every day. Um, we did raise $3,500 towards the wells, which is amazing. <laughs> Um, and we did have one little kiddo accept Christ. So it was a wonderful week, and uh, yeah, we're going to do it again next year. So as you could tell that we um, were kept pretty busy. Um, just real simple, the, that camp, which is at Mountain Meadows Ranch in Christopher Creek, we have been doing that with five or six churches consecutively for almost 29 years. Um, I've been there for 26. 
of the 29 years. Um, amazing, amazing. Five churches for Southern Baptist Glendale, for Southern Scottsdale. Rimview Community Church out of Payson unbelievably had the most kids, which what, David, how long has Pastor David been there? Maybe five or six years? They went from zero kids and there were 29 children at that camp this year. So, and they have an amazing youth group that actually went to Zona as well. So God is really doing wonderful things at that church. That's the third church, West Phoenix Baptist Church. They just came on board two years ago and then us. So it's a lot of fun. We did have um, five decisions, one of them being one of our littles here, um, Cordelia Mahoney doesn't attend our church. They go to CCV, but she's been coming to children's camp because she's heard about it via Facebook and online. And um, she accepted Christ at children's camp this year. And we have a follow-up visit with her. And we're going to um, talk with her mom and dad and also maybe reach out to um, CCV and see how that will work with um, following through with that for her. So just a few little stats that I wanted to share with y'all for those of you that haven't heard about um, Children's Camp before. Um, first of all, we wanna thank you very much for allowing us to go again. And for those of you that have supported some of the children, you know, sponsored them in going, um, that's a big deal. Um, this year, um, they incorporated the money that the kids would bring for their um, snacks, incorporated into the cost so we didn't have to deal with any change or anything like that. Every day they got a free snack and a free drink during their free time. Um, we had 30 adult leaders, 15 junior counselors, which Kiara was one of them, and 90 children and one nurse. Um, we had 11 aged Bible studies groups. They were divided, you know, all girls and all boys, so 11 Bible study groups. We had seven people man the kitchen crew, and we had cooked meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Really good food, actually, too. So um, they took really good care of us. And the kitchen crew came from First Southern Scottsdale. That's all volunteer. And this year, they actually the kitchen crew was new. Needless to say, a lot of the people at camp this year was brand new. We had a new children's director for camp. We had a new nurse, which kind of bummed me out, but that's okay. Um, I got to do other things, and a whole new staff. So it was a learning and growing experience as well. Um, the theme was called Case Closed, and it was built off Inspector Gadget and investigating the seven, seven of the I am's of Jesus. So we went through, which I know Kiara is gonna probably share, I think, a Bible study, um, because she covered for me when <laughs> I um, had to take a run into town. Um, one was, I am the bread of life. One was, I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. And then the last day we covered three, I am the way and the truth and the life. And two of the four nights, of course, we arrive there on Sunday afternoon, but, and the first study starts here, and then we go through Thursday. Um, we had two nights of invitation. And most of the time, the children, um, we had a lot of children come forward, but most of the things that they were asking prayer for, what had to do internally with them, um, family dynamics, a lot of blended families out there, a lot of um, separated families out there. Um, I had two children, oh gosh, come to me asking me how do they share Jesus with their dad who's in prison? How, um, how do they share Jesus with their friends? What words do they say? I miss my daddy, he's in prison. A lot of that going on. And we need to remember you know, we think life is tough sometimes when we have to discipline our children or get after them or, you know, my kids are in their 30s and we still want to yank a knot in their tail every once in a while. But um, we are so blessed. Uh, but to have those concerns and they're that little, they're that little and they know. Um, 
Anyway, it's a good thing, though, because they're willing to talk about it, and we're, we have the opportunity to share how much God loves them and share verses with them. The theme verse was, um, <clears throat> sorry, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And how many opportunities we got to share that. Um, the salvations at camp were um, from other churches. There were four, and then we had Cordelia. And then we had baptism requests, two of them by Pastor Dave's twins, Augie and Sawyer, his two grandkids, and a little girl named Poppy. Um, some of the activities, as you got to see up there, we keep them very busy. They're up at 7.30 in the morning, and it runs nonstop until lights out for younger people at 9.30 at night, 10.30 for, for the older kids. So some of the things they did, as you saw, was archery, fort making, where they actually have to go and bring all the sticks in and build a fort that they can either sustainably get under or stand on. And then when that class leaves, the junior counselors and stuff have to drag all that stuff back out so they can, the next group that comes has to find it all again <laughs> and do it all over again. And they do that twice a day for four days. Um, fishing, which is a blast. We actually had one more um, child enter the Lonely Hearts Club, um, which is, <laughs> yeah, there's um, the Lonely Hearts Club. Um, Pastor Dave Barber started that where if you catch the fish, and they, he actually fillets the fish there, and they video it, and they have to eat the heart, and they have to show them chewing it and swallowing it and sticking out their tongue and showing it's gone, then you're a member of the Lonely Hearts Club. There's over 300 children that have done that <laughs> in the 20-some-odd years, yeah. So it's pretty cool, and they've gotten so bold as to eat in the eye and all that. You, when you hear that crunch, you just kind of walk away, and it's like, ah, yeah. So they have about one and a half hours to play during free time, where that's when they get their canteen and their snack, and they have the freedom to just play, whether it's in the water, whether it's with their friends. And you saw how many children were always with other kids and playing and interacting and meeting new friends, and that's what we like to encourage. Um, also, the big things were the horse race, which the junior counselors have to ride the horse. They're also responsible for either the tree houses or the cabins for writing a story about the horse, how the horse got to the cabin, and why it chose their cabin, and um, why it came to Mountain Meadows Ranch. And we had some real interesting stories, let me tell you. And they have to decorate their horses with whatever they have on hand in the cabin, and then, um, like I said, Dave, somebody who asked about the age of the riders, only junior counselors are allowed to ride the horses. The adults were too old, you know, were too heavy, and we just can't ride them like <laughs> they ride them. They get pretty crazy, and it's pretty comical. Um, so we have the horse race. We have Minute to Win It with the kids and with the junior counselors and capture the flag for the older kids, which goes up into the hills, and that's pretty crazy. Um, because they hide the flag, and then the other kids have to find it, and they go to jail, and it's pretty busy, and then dodgeball. So all in all, it's a very rustic camp, but they're kids, and they have a lot, a lot of fun. Um, I know I have Landon is here. Did you want to share anything, Landon? Do you want to say something about a fun time you did or a special thing you did? Did you catch a fish? No? Do you remember the number of the cabin that you were in? Yeah. Cabin what? Yeah. Cabin two, and it's right by the creek, huh? Yeah. Do you remember some of the names of your friends that you met there? What were their names? Um, Weston. And who was your cabin counselor, your cabin leader? Pastor Dave. <laughs> yeah, which was very interesting because Hannah has been to that camp and so are a couple of her brothers too. So when I let Pastor Dave know that Landon was going there, his eyebrow just kind of went up and I'm like, hey, you're going to have some fun. So um, let's see, Kara, do you want to share? Yeah. <clears throat> There's a lot that I could say about what I did at camp, but overall, <sighs> I might cry. Anyway, um, the kids, there's a special way that as a JC, I get to connect with the kids. And I had the very great pleasure of meeting a little girl named Violet June. 
and we connected over the fact that we had the same birthday. And she was very shy at the beginning of the week, didn't want to talk to anybody, didn't really want to interact with anybody but her sister. But over the course of the week, she made so many different friends, and it was so amazing to be able to be the first step in her being able to connect to other people and find just some great friends, because all the girls that I had in my cabin were absolutely incredible. Um, even though I mixed up Stella, Bella, and Ella, but <laughs> they were great kids. Um, I did take over Bible study one day for Miss Chris, and it was the day we went over the shepherding and how I am the good, the good shepherd. And it was, it was a challenge for sure, because I had about maybe an hour warning before I took over. So I had to quickly throw together some notes and go over the lesson myself and be able to just take a moment to pray about it, figure out what I was going to do, what I was going to say. But thank the Lord, I was led wonderfully, and it was just, it was incredible to hear the kids get involved and listen to what I was saying, and it's just an incredible feeling to know that I helped those kids kind of become closer, and there was just some incredible moments with some of the kids where they confided in me, and I was able to support them and help them and lead them, and we were able to set up transportation for a girl who did not have solid transportation to church, so she gets a ride to church every Sunday now because of that, so... Like I said, it was just an incredible experience. I'm so glad I was able to come down to Arizona and go to that and be able to support Miss Chris and the other kids that went. So, It's fun. Even though you go to camp thinking there's just so many um, things that you're responsible for and things you have to do, but there's so, other, so many other little things that happen internally and throughout. She connected with another little girl and has their, her phone number so that they can text and keep track of each other, you know, throughout the following year. And Kara doesn't even live here. She lives in a whole other state. So she has an opportunity to serve without the church body. So next year, I hope we get to bring more kids and um, be a bigger force within that camp. Who knows? Maybe we might have to get go to another camp and have a bigger area. So anyway, thanks for listening. Hi guys, um, my name is Audrey and I just wanted to share a little recap of my um, trip at NMB, which is North Myrtle Beach in South Carolina. Um, it's very hard to fit four weeks of content and four weeks of like God stories and the amazing things that God did and the amazing things that I learned and that he taught me all in one video. So I'm just going to do a couple key points and honestly if you want more information you can probably check out my Instagram or just like text me. A lot of you know who I am. Um, so basically we had four weeks and each, like we had an overarching theme, which was um, through God's eyes. And so those, that, that overarching theme was broken down into four weeks. And so the first week was through God's eyes, we see ourselves. So it's talking about our identity in Christ and how to defeat the lies of um, the enemy. And then the second week was through God's eyes, we see each other. And so that was talking about like, how do we build Christ-like community and encourage one another on this mission trip? And then also how do we evangelize and talk to people who are different cultures than us? And how do we seek to understand and learn them through the lens of how, God's, how God views them? Um, and then I just really wanna to touch on the most, the third week and the fourth week. So the third week um, was through God's eyes, we see the lost. And through, and then the fourth week was through God's eyes, we see the nations. So basically how our schedule looked is every week or every single day we had um, like our own God time in the morning and like our own quiet time, devotional time. And then we had like student content also. And then every single day we had um, evangelism from 1 to 4.30 p.m. And then on Fridays we had evangelism all day. So evangelism from 11 a.m. to... Uh, 5 p.m. I think and then Saturdays we had it from like 10 p.m. to 2 p.m. Um, we had Bible studies too that we had to do so like Bible study content that we had to prep and get done we had um, our own personal like God time that we had to do every single day and then we also had ministry teams and so I was on the outreach team so I was constantly coming up with ideas for outreach um, we had two outreach events the entire month one on like alternating Saturdays um and so we had to like plan those and prep those and we we're the ones that made the signs and made like made sure people went out in pods made sure like everyone was doing what they were supposed to do and like delegating jobs and everything so on top of just evangelizing we had a lot of other responsibilities and a lot of other things that we had to do so week three um was see the lost and so it was through god's eyes we see the lost 
And so I just want to touch on a verse and it says Matthew 9, 36 through 37 says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And so this verse is one that they said a lot throughout the month. Um, and it's just basically a, a reminder to have compassion on people and to view them like Jesus views them, which are helpless and lost. Like a lot of people don't know about Jesus. They don't know what Jesus did. It's it's really easy to be like, oh, like they're just not following God. But like they don't know. Like there's a lot of people that just don't know. They don't know because they weren't raised in it or they they just don't know. And so um just to to view people with compassion. And then also like going on the beach when it was really busy, like one to four thirty PM was a busy, busy section of time on the beach. And so just looking at all the people on the beach and just seeing like so many umbrellas and everything and just being reminded of like the laborers are few but the harvest is plentiful and so like the lost is plentiful but like the people that are actually able to go share the gospel are few and it just brought me back to a statistic that we learned which says um only two percent of christians share their faith once a year at least once a year so it's like some christians share their faith a lot more but only two percent share their faith at least once a year and so um Going back to seeing the last week, we had a numerical goal that we had to set for gospel conversations and a non-numerical goal. And so I just want to touch on the non-numerical goal. The non-numerical goal was, um, my goal was to talk to college students that were a group of six or more. And I just am really scared to talk to college students that are in big groups for some reason, um, especially about Jesus, because I don't know, like, just knowing this generation it just scares me a little and so uh that was my goal and I going into the week three seeing the lost was very fearful like the spiritual warfare was real and I was just very fearful the entire the entire time like every single time we'd step foot on the beach I would get panic attacks and I'd have to have like my evangelism partner like pray for me um and I literally one time straight up told my evangelism partner I was like I am going to get a panic attack once we step onto the sand. So you're just going to have to like pray. And then like, you're going to ask me, should we go up to this person? Should we go up to this person? And I'm going to say no, because I'm scared, but you're just going to have to push me that way anyway. If you feel led to like Holy Spirit leads you to, um, like, don't let my no stop you because it's literally just out of fear right now. And I know it's dumb and I know I'll get over it. Um, and so yeah, and so that's what, like, a lot of my evangelism partners did was they, like, pushed me outside my comfort zone, and, like, one of them even asked me what my non-numerical goal was, and I told them, and he was like, oh, yeah, we can do that, and then the first conversation we have are with, like, eight college students, and I'm the one leading it, and I was just like, okay, um, so, like, my evangelism partners definitely did push me outside my comfort zone, and I'm so thankful for that, um, we had one really hard day, and so it was, like, the last day of See the Lost Week, and so, um, we had like a conversation with a Jehovah Witness for an hour and a half and then we had a lady talk to us and she was mocking, basically mocking us for our faith and our belief in God for like 45 minutes until we just like stopped the conversation. And then we were walking away and I was feeling so discouraged because I had seen like all of my friends um, talk and like have so many cool God stories throughout the week and so many people accept Christ throughout the week and I was just like, why isn't God using me? And we're just walking and all of a sudden like, um, I just felt this nudge and as we were walking past this group of six adults and it was a family and I was just like mm -mm, nope not doing it and felt a nudge to go talk to them and I was like nope and then I told my evangelism partner Jordan I was like I feel really led to go talk to them and so we ended up going and talking to them after some hesitancy and the Holy Spirit just giving me the courage to and so we ended up talking to them and one of them actually happened to be a Christian and at the end of sharing the gospel with uh, one of the mem family members, at the end of that, I went up to this guy named Tim, who was the Christian in the group. And he was like, I go, I just want to let you know, like, just to be praying for her because I did share the gospel with her, but she's not ready to accept it yet. Um, and he was like, thank you so much. Like, I was literally praying right before you guys came up that I would be able to talk to my family about Jesus today. And then you guys showed up. And I was like, that was the Holy Spirit because I was terrified to come over. But the Holy Spirit led me to. Um, and so that was just one really cool way that God worked. We also had, uh, party houses while we were, like, living in our apartments. So, like, we had a street and then we had apartments that we were living in. 
and then around us were um, party houses and like a bunch of college students would go and party. Um, and so we actually had one where we were worshiping one night and we could barely hear ourselves because of how loud the partiers were partying and like how loud their music was. And we were singing Great Is, Your, Great Is The Lord and we we're like at the bridge of it, almost at the end of the song. And all of a sudden all the music around us shuts off and the partiers come down and ask to worship with us. And then we ended up praying in a huge circle, like in the middle of the street with them and like ministering to them. And it was really cool. Like God worked in so many more, like so many, so many more ways than those two stories alone. Um, and then I just want to touch on See the Nations Week. And so See the Nations Week was a big week for me. Um, God showed me a lot that week and really broke my heart for the lost. Um, we had this missions experience where you were told to go, like secretly told by a leader to go to a certain place at a certain time on summer mission property. And like we had this youth group, like this youth room that the, this church lent us um, for the month. And so we all met there and I, we were given like fake passports. And so I was um, in the United States and I was like, okay, of course, like whatever. And so I was in the United States and then there was like different countries like Europe were, was represented, China was represented, Middle East, South uh, America and Africa were, were represented. And so like they had like all these games and the whole goal was like you started with a certain amount of water bottles filled up and you had to fill up all your water bottles. So you had to fill up 10 water bottles. America started with seven. And so our goal was by winning solitaire games, we were able to fill up our water bottles and we had three left that we had to fill up. And so basically, just to keep it short and simple, the water bottles represented the access to the gospel that a country had. And so like France only had like five water bottles filled up at the start. America had seven. Um, China had like two. Middle East had one. Um, and so like you had to just fill up your water bottles and you could travel. So like if you had your passport, you could travel and go to a different country and help them fill their water bottles up or like what, experience what they're playing or what games they're doing. And so it was all very like symbolic of like, what they believed in that country and like the access to the gospel and all of that and so we uh any anyway we get up to the like the end of it and i like went to europe i went to like all these places to like see what games they were playing and like help them fill up their water bottles and we get to the end and we're having a large group discussion and three students that we forgot about came out and they had this like lego set and it wasn't it was a horrible horrible attempt to build a tractor and we had them build that um, and so basically they, they basically told us, they're like, yeah, we, uh, were told to go into the attic before anyone arrived. We were giving a, we were given a box of Legos and told to build a tractor with no manual. And we were just really hoping that someone would find the manual and give it to us and help us. And like, every time we heard you guys in the hallway or you heard you guys having fun, we were just really hoping that someone would find us and help us build this Lego set. And we didn't even know that we had water bottles that we needed to fill up. We didn't even know that was an option. And so my heart broke at that exact moment because I was in America before I went to like go see um, what everyone else was doing. I had a Lego manual in my hand and I was looking through it and it was a Lego manual to a tractor set. And I was just like, oh, like I wonder what that's for. Like it probably just represents America cause we're in America. And I just left and just didn't, didn't even attempt. And it just broke my heart because that those three people represented um, the 1040 window, which is 3.4 billion people in the span of India, lower or uh, lower China, and then Middle East that do not have never heard that Jesus died for them or never heard that Jesus existed. Um, there's one Christian for every 100,000 people there in those in that region, and um, there's like not a lot of nations have their Bible and their language. There's really highly persecuted areas there. And it just broke because I know the gospel like the back of my hand and I have the grace that God gave me. And yet I didn't even try. I'm not even like trying my hardest to go overseas or to even like pray for these people or do anything to witness to them. And it just broke my heart. Um, and I literally just remember crying and I was just like, God, like if you send me, I'll go. And so that is my heart attitude after this mission trip is like, God, like I want to go international. Um, I want to go where you send me and they even had us do like a call to missions where they had globes like paper globes set up um and there was 22 because their goal for this mission trip is that 20 that half of us there was 45 college students there 
22 of us will go overseas in the next two years on a mission trip. And if you were re if you were willing to commit to that call, um, then you were to stand up and grab a globe and um, sit back down and like pray and stuff. And I stood up and grabbed a globe. Like I was one of the first people to, because I just, I don't know, it just breaks my heart that like 2% of all Christians share their faith only once a year. And w we live in a country that is so easily accessible to the gospel. And it just like, we're not doing enough. Like there's people, there's four point, there's 3.4 billion people out there that have never heard about Jesus. And we can be trying harder. Like I can be trying harder. And so I just want to encourage you, like share your faith more, pray for those people and go if you're called to go. Um, thank you for all the support. You guys helped me so much. And I'm so thankful that God led me there. I'm so thankful that he used you and your support and your prayers. And I'm just blown away at what God has done on this mission trip. We had 1,300 gospel conversations and 172 new brothers and sisters in Christ as a result of this mission trip. Thank you so much. Bye. Folks kind of share their experience and what went on. So for those of you that don't know, Zona Camp is a camp that's put on, um, and the college students from Christian Challenge are kind of the camp counselors, or we call them crew. And then the junior high and high schoolers from different churches throughout Arizona, they go and participate in the camp. So they're like the campers, and we're the crew. And then the staff with Christian Challenge, we're there to support um, the crew and, and kind of help them. So we do it, uh, this year was at California Baptist University, so that the weather would be a little bit cooler. So we kind of all head down there, and uh, we put on this camp for uh, qu quite a few days. It's actually uh, um, Monday through Friday for the campers, but the crew has to get there a lot earlier because they have to train. So there's a lot of training involved. The theme this year was past, present, future, and so those were the focus on the full days. And what's that? And remember, yeah, remember because it was the 20 year anniversary for, um, for Zona Camp. So it's, I don't have this, we just ended on uh, Friday and everybody that would do the numbers and stuff are probably still sleeping. Um, but, so I don't have exact numbers, but I do, from what I saw heard throw around, there was about 800 youth and about 1,100 youth plus um, like the, the, the um, youth leaders because they bring chaperones with them. And then crew and staff, we had probably around 45 crew and staff kind of. Um, um, it's most post-COVID for sure. Yeah, pre-COVID we had some more. So um, I'm going to go ahead and let her click some pictures. And I'm going to try to narrate through some of those. So first thing we have to do is stage. So we have college students come from across the U.S. We have Texas, Tennessee people. They come, they, they set up, and then they have to go and they get on the buses and go, and then they start training. And then training, there's a lot of prayer involved. We're praying for folks. This is practicing for, wow, these pictures are flying. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna try to keep up, so I'm gonna let, let that happen. So we have to unload. There's a lot of training. The training is pretty intense because a lot of the students that we're dealing with have trauma. So we're getting training on how to deal with trauma, how to deal with abuse, how to spot a predator, um, how to find, um, identify grooming, and to be there to counsel and help these students as well. Uh, but additionally is there's counselors on ball that, that also support with that. So a lot of training, a lot of prayer. Um, you'll see them praying in different places. We actually have a wall, these whiteboards, that have every name of every student that's coming and every youth leader that's coming. And we take these stickies and we pray for them by name and put them on the prayed for list and once they're all on the prayed for list, we start over. And we pray these over all these names multiple times. So um, then they're set up. They have to do things like setting up the, the different games and the nine squares. Um, then there's um, the arrival. The students start coming and you see all these signs. And they're like, yay, and hyping all the students and getting them excited to come. Then there's worship prep. They have to get ready for the worship and they get their instructions and what to do and their places and their roles and um, get all ready for that. 
and then we have worship, and then after worship is response time. So this is one of the trainings for uh, worship prep, and this is kind of when, you know, worship, before worship's going. This is them praying over the, the seats that the students would be sitting in. Um, then there's a response time at the end, and what happens is there's a different call at different times. Live, serve, love, live, serve, love. As I'm getting all hyped up and everything like that. This is one of Alex that you guys remember, one of our youth was up there. This is the worship center. Um, and then at the end, we have this response time, and it might be something like a call to repentance, a call to salvation, different things like that. But these students flood out of the back, and the responses were so great. At sometimes we had to double up students. We ran out of crew to talk with them, so they had been trained to talk with them, and they've been trained how to share the gospel and how to walk them through different things. Um, so that then we have this response time. Then there's a lot of different um, teachers. There's like a master teacher that teaches them. Then they break into small groups. And then they have actual events they go to. Like everything is focused around the gospel. So one of the things was henna. And they do henna, but they share with them the gospel. And then they have like a senior social and different events. They have different classes on LGBT or whatever the thing may be. And they teach. That's the response. Look how many kids are out there. I mean, it's like a field of these young people being counseled, and you can see they're doubled up in some cases. We just didn't have enough people. We had the crew, plus youth leaders that volunteered to help, plus challenge people, and then, you know, counselors and stuff. So um, I don't know how many salvations we had. It was, all, all of those aren't salvations. It was a lot of um, repentance and, and talking sure and different things. We don't know, exactly we don't know the counts, yeah. So that's kind of the, the rundown of how it happens. And then they pack up and go away, you know, go home. But most of our days were about 7 a.m. in the morning till about midnight, um, 7 a.m., get ready, and then they have their God time. They spend time with God. Breakfast starts at 8, and they're manning breakfast, and then all the way through midnight, they're taking care of these. It's like nonstop. Do you guys get to go to your room at all during the day? Barely. Barely, maybe. Yeah. I got to go for like 10 minutes a couple of days. Yeah. So. So I'll let them go and kind of talk about their personal experiences. But thank you, folks, for sending us. These folks, um, it's a mission trip, but they have to pay 350 bucks um, to go for the week. And we get on a bus and, and go down there. And um, so anyways. OK. Um, my name's Miranda. I don't go to this church, so I haven't met most of you. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you for sponsoring us to go. Um, I am truly grateful, especially because this isn't my church. Um, that just shows uh, how much faith you guys have in us uh, to send us there. Um, I would not have been able to go on this trip um, if it wasn't for your, your help and your prayers um, and your sponsorship. So thank you for that. Um, this is my first time at Zona. Um, it was really a wonderful experience. Um, just getting to be in that leadership position and help um, kind of mentor and, and guide some of these students. Um, yeah, and just to help them um, grow in their faith. Uh, most of the girls I talk to have uh, been raised in the church. Um, they already have that strong relationship with God, so I was just um, kind of there to help encourage them and um, remind them of their faith and how powerful it is um, to just know God. Uh, so yeah. yeah, Zona was really great. Um, I think one of the biggest things, you know, I had a lot of conversations. Like, I would try to sit down with people like at lunch with the kids and just, um, yeah, like, I, I think one thing that I see was huge when I talked to a lot of kids, they were well knowledge. And it just shows me the importance of just uh, the church developing uh, people, really. Um, a lot of, and especially, like, their parents. A lot of them were raised in the church. But some of them, like, I hear them, like, man, there's, like, so mature, like, in the faith. And they're, like, 12 years old. And, um, and, and it's not just because, and I asked them, too, because some of them I asked them, like, you know, I always ask, like, I, I said the same thing each time with each get up, like, so, like, was there like a point where like you decided like you know I, I you know I got raised in the church my parents and like I was like was there a point where like you're like you know I need to decide for myself 
And so they go on. They're like, yeah, like, you know, this is when I did it. And um, those, and when we had those times where, you know, they would have worship and then, you know, they would come to us. Um, a lot of them, you know, dedicated their life to do ministry. There was a call to ministry. So like, you know, this zone is really, is huge. And it just shows me like the importance of the church. Like there's going to be, honestly, like future ministers, future pastors, future people. You know, we talked about Audrey. You know, there's some students who want to do missions and go out there and go make disciples. Um, and uh, I think one of the cool things I like, I, it's funny because I, I never thought I liked it was henna, <laughs> surprisingly. Um, I, I mean, I was a great. <laughs> I'll just get there. Uh, uh, but uh, I think it was funny. That one of my crew members was like, yeah, this girl was uh, talking about how, like, yeah, there's this crew. You, he said like an hour. <laughs> yeah, she, she was like, yeah, he took like an hour, but he took forever. But man, it was a good conversation. <laughs> Like, and so, yeah, it, it, it was just um, asking just all these, uh, you know, just good conversations. And uh, it just really showed me, like, how, you know, this, this church was all over, all over. And uh, it, it just really, it really inspired me, too. Like, wow, there's a lot of people, like, young kids who are servant leaders of the church who want to do, you know, Jesus' work. And so it was really cool. Uh, I think the coolest thing was, as well, was... Uh, so they had an offering, uh, that was huge. Uh, they had an offering to uh, raise support. They were working on, uh, with Nepal, I believe, yeah. And uh, their goal was to reach like 5,000. And uh, so they, the first day, the first night they did it, they raised like 4,000, I believe like 300. And then I think that they want to push it like that. And let's see if we can do five, like we're close. Like, I think they got shocked that they were gonna raise that. The next night, they're like, like dang guys, we did raise 5,000. We raised 6,000. So it was just crazy. Like a bunch of young students raised that much money uh, uh, for the offering. And, and it, it was really going to bless uh, their ministry uh, to do their work there. So it was huge um, that a lot of young students did that. And uh, like I said, just, uh, yeah, and the stuff we did, like I said, everyone had very meaningful conversations. Um, like it, it's just crazy to me. A lot of the zona work is volunteer work. Like, m mostly everyone that does Zona is all volunteer. And that's, and that's included, obviously, as well as us as well. Um, but, yeah, like, just thank you guys, you know, for the work you do. And, you know, there's other churches that do the same. And it's, it, it definitely pays dividends, you know, because I can see in a lot of these younger, uh, you know, teenagers. Some of them are, are, you know, senior going to college. And, um, you know, they're well equipped. And that's just thanks to the church and for their, their – you know, the youth leaders and, uh, you know, just the people they have in their lives that are godly. So I definitely appreciate it. And, you know, we definitely did some good work. So just thank you guys. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll just say the henna. I don't know who ever came up with that idea. But it's brilliant. Right. They grabbed the person's hand to write henna on them and they got them. Right. <laughs> and they're drawing a Bible story on their hand, telling them about the gospel. And if it takes an hour, they get a long story. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna try to implement that in, in the college too. But yeah, just lots of different things. These guys were amazing crew. They didn't complain, you know, they just worked tirelessly. They were super intentional, like they were spread out. And if you were playing nine square with the kids, your goal was to build a relationship and talk to the kids and share the gospel with them. And it was over and over and over all through the day. They were getting the gospel from um, the main session to their master teacher, to their small groups, to going out on the lawn trying to hang out. Yeah. They're getting the gospel. So uh, definitely a lot of people touched. And the, the calls were amazing. Like we usually, like last year, we would be able to one for one the students that come out. And when they were talking about repentance or if there's any struggle that you have, the number of kids that came out I remember seeing them come down from the, the bleachers and I'm yelling outside like, plan B, plan B, like, you know, there's like too many people. But um, it was good because they needed to talk and they look up to these guys and they just, they share with them and they get to get some good counsel and guidance and stuff. So, so thank you guys and thank you church for supporting these two. A couple people from the church were able to, to step up and, and support these folks. So we really appreciate the ability to send them. And it's kind of like this ongoing thing. Like we see kids from go to kids camp 
and then we see them be junior counselors, and then we see them go to Zona, and then we see them be crew at Zona, right? And we're teaching them this pattern of serving and living life on mission and living life sharing the gospel. And it's just a great thing. So anyways, thank you very much. I can talk forever. I'm gonna walk away. <laughs> covered most everything, which is good. Um, and so we get the, they get the hard work of it and we get to enjoy their labor. Uh, and so that's the good thing is that they've been tirelessly working. Um, and then we get to be able to, uh, to go through, um, Zona because of what they do. And so we're so thankful for that. So our mornings wouldn't start as early. Uh, for us, we were, uh, green. And so there was four different colors, and so each color had a different time for eating. And so thankfully, like it was a good thing and a bad thing, but we had the late shift. And so our kids were able to sleep in a little bit. So it was really nice. You know, we had like a nine o'clock eating time. And so it was nice to eat breakfast at nine. You know, you're able to get ready. It just kind of pushed you for our 930 uh, morning prep. Uh, and then we went into morning celebration where we had, uh, we studied the book of James with James uh, Cavalier, the, the leader. Uh, and so studied through the book of James. And we broke out into our, um, what they call master teacher. And so it was uh, kind of trying to be able to break down this, this uh, kind of a different passage on, um, uh, so each of the, they'd start off with like a, uh, an icebreaker, um, just to be able to kind of loosen up the room, a game uh, that was fun. And then they all went into kind of teaching times, um, whether it be on the prodigal son uh, or uh, different aspects. I've got it written down, sorry. Uh, so different things that they were learning about. So they really had three different teaching opportunities, three different learning opportunities. So morning James with James, master teacher, uh, and then with that, from that, from that master teacher, um, they would then go into small groups and kind of talk through that. Uh, and these were led by our Christian Challenge uh, crew, some of our Christian Challenge staff, and then some of the uh, pastors, youth pastors um, uh, throughout. Um, and so then we would go to lunch. And after lunch, there was non-optional, optional time. So, uh, so yeah, so there was different things. You got to choose what you got to do, but it was not optional to go to these things. And so the first day uh, we allowed our students to, to play if they wanted to go play. Then the rest of the days we said, no, you need to pick a class and go for it. And so we had some that uh, did a tour of the engineering department, which was really, really cool to see how God is, is working there at CBU. It was a super neat opportunity uh, how they're um, glorifying the Lord in and through that. And so they learned, hey, you know what? Even through whatever I do, I can, uh, and even through learning about what I'm going to do, even in college, I can glorify the Lord. Cool opportunity. Uh, they had different classes, as Scott shared. Uh, and so our, our students just went to that. Then we went to uh, optional activities. And so that was actually optional. And so we went to, some took a nap, um, and some played nine square, most played nine square, which is that game with the PVC. Uh, and so that's where mo you could find most all of our students uh, was there by that or kind of talking or dancing, having a good time, uh, just enjoying time with one another. You go into different games and opportunities. Um, and so then we would go, after that, we'd go um, to Lunch, or to dinner, uh, then we go to worship prep where we kind of all pray together, get some different um, final instructions, and we go into worship. Uh, and then we'd have uh, church group time where we'd share about what God was doing, and then we would go into late nights um, and just opportunities for uh, more games, more fellowship, more fun, um, cool opportunities. And so that's kind of what it looked like for us. Uh, and then as Scott said, they, we were studying uh, through the theme was remember, but he used kind of a past, present, future, uh, looking at your past, um, knowing that you're not defined by your past, uh, looking at our identity in Christ and the present time, and that Christ wants to be able to change you in the present. Uh, and then what does that look like for the future? We talked about how to look forward to what the Lord is doing. And so kind of bouncing off of this Psalm 77 uh, passage. Um, so it was Psalm 77 uh, verses 11 through 15. 
And it said, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your works of old. I will ponder all of your work and I'll meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. With your arm, you with your arm, excuse me, redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. And so that last night, he, um, so if you see the t-shirt, I don't have the t-shirt because they didn't do something right with the order. And so this is my Zona t-shirt that I got at Zona and it was a International Mission Board's uh, t-shirt. And so if you see their t-shirts, uh, it has stones on it. And this is this, these stones of remembrance from Joshua chapter one. And looking back, whether you're Right now, you can look back, whether you're looking towards the future, you can say, or right now, I know that God has been faithful in the past, and I know that he'll be faithful now, and I know that he'll be faithful in the future because of how good he has been. And so really cool encouragement. They all got a stone, uh, and to be able to, to tangibly remember uh, something special uh, that the Lord was doing in this opportunity. So any of our students want to be able to share? Yes, ma'am, come on up. And then if, if any other students want to share after her, and I know uh, Michelle wanted to share, and then uh, after Michelle shares, uh, then we'll get to uh, Caesar and we'll close it up, and then we'll go for ice cream, so... Dave wants to share too. Oh, the video is a great idea. Um, we should probably do that after Gemma. That's a lovely idea. I love it. Yes. And so if you want to be able to share, go ahead and get in a line. Hey, way to go. Good job. I like that shirt. That's cool. That's really cool. All right. There you go. Take it away. Hi. My name is Gemma. This was my first year at Zona. So it was pretty awesome. And. First of all, I just want to thank you all for your prayers. I really felt them, and I really appreciated them. I know the whole youth group did. And I'm going to be reading all my notebook because I can't speak off the top of my head. I'm just too nervous. <laughs> um, when I got home on Friday evening, my mom asked me if I felt closer to God after going to Zona. And I was so tired and grouchy and grumpy <laughs> from driving and sad from hearing the news of JT's family that I was just like, no. And she was like, oh. So, and then I went to bed and I woke up on Saturday morning and I was feeling kind of like, why did I say that? <laughs> and I was praying and spending time with the Lord and I realized, yes, I do. Like I was reading through my notes and I realized how much I learned, how much I've grown closer to the Lord. and. I feel his presence near me and it's so mighty and I felt it in the worship. It was so awesome. I felt it in the message that James was speaking and I felt it in all the fellowship I had with my church family and the new friends that I made. And I already dedicated my life to Christ a couple years ago, but I just feel fresh again. Like the spirit is new in me and I've never been closer to the Lord ever in my life. And Zona was so awesome. Everything, all the people, it was so good to be around fellow Christians. It was such a good environment. And we were never not doing anything. Like, we were never stopped. It felt like everything we did, most of the time we were just eating. <laughs> but it was amazing food, so it was okay. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you for your prayers. <laughs> okay. Um, while at Zona, I feel like I got closer to God. The worship sessions were amazing. The first day, everyone was already comfortable with each other. It was like we knew each other since birth. The first song in worship, everyone went up and started singing and praising God, which that made me feel uplifted too. I had an amazing small group. One small group, the second day, we already felt like family. We also can't forget about the food. Having an icy almost every single meal was delicious, <laughs> along with the amazing waffles. Zona is a trip I never knew I would get to attend. Zona honestly changed my ways of seeing how much God helps us in every little thing, and how there are still so many Christians out there that still are not afraid to love and worship God freely. Thanks so much to the adults that went and loved us on this trip. The trip was such a blessing, and I can't wait until next year.
all the way down here. <laughs> so I was not genius enough to write notes like these guys, so I'll try my best. But So this is my second year at Zona, and I will admit, this year it was different for me than last year, and I think that's a good thing. God works, and you, God should work in you different each time you go, because there should be diff something different that needs improving and grown. And I think it's, this wasn't as easy for me as it was last year, I'll say. And I think that's the way God works best, when things aren't as easy. Because there is things that hurt. There is things that were hard. But God is able to work through those so well. And it just feels so much better about those things now. I'm still, they're still going to hurt. They're still going to struggle, even though they shouldn't. But they're better. They don't hurt as bad. And I'm not trying to come give y'all some sob story or <laughs> something that, like that, but it's closer to God now. It's when you can give him the things that are hard, it doesn't make them less hard. It gives you support in those hard things. And I think that's something that's really important in a Christian's life and that's a little stronger now. <laughs> This is what they're going to look like. You got your sunglasses, a cap, you got your backpack with everything that you need, and your tag so you know where you need to be. Um, so this is what I wore for four days in a row, super early in the morning all the way to like 11 o'clock at night. Um, this was my first time at Zona. I was not anticipating on going to Zona. Um, my kids have gone, but I had been praying um, the whole month of May and June, um, especially a couple, at least probably two days a week with a group of ladies at six o'clock in the morning here, um, just prayer walking the church, praying for our youth, praying for our youth leaders, praying um, just for everything that's going on. And so there was one um, time during my devotions 
as I'm praying, God's like, you know what? You're going to go to Sona and be the woman's leader for those girls. And I was like, you know what, God? That's not what I've been praying. (laughs) That's not it. I'm just going to push that aside, but I'm going to continue to pray. I'm going to continue to pray for the great things that are going to happen at all of the camps. And then a few days later, Amy goes, Michelle, you have you considered being the youth leader for Zona? We're looking for somebody. And I was like, what is God speaking to you too? I'm like, that's not, what I, that's not what I'm praying for. And I just continued to pray about it. And God just continued to work in my life and to show things, um, convicted me of some things that I might not have needed to ask for forgiveness. And then a few, maybe a couple weeks later, I get a text message from JT. And he's like, have you considered, you know, we need somebody. And I was like, okay, God, I need to go. And I need to listen, just like listening to my daughter Audrey share. You feel God call, you need to listen. And what an amazing, amazing Zona experience it was. To be able to have an opportunity to get to know these girls, um, get a feel for the camp. Um, One of my favorite things, well, I'll just give a couple highlights of... Uh, the day. So yes, we had a nine o'clock breakfast, but me, I'm an early morning riser no matter what time I go to bed at night, which was around midnight every night. But I was still up with the birds. And so I um, would end up getting, doing my devotions, I'd end up getting ready, go get coffee, and I would prayer walk the campus. Um, I would stop at every, the places where the uh, Christian Challenge was staying, I'd stop and pray for those leaders. Um, I where nine square and all the games were happening. I'd stop and pray for that, just for the cafeteria, the food, um, what was going to happen in worship, and just preparing um, what those kids are going to hear. And just I would prayer walk the campus every day, and then stop where you saw those boards that had the names. I'd stop in there and I'd pray individually for kids and leaders, um, just for God to work in their lives. Um, the other really neat thing that was neat to see is that. Um, just the re- reuniting with other youth that attended LBC. So one of the pictures you saw of me there, that was Adam White. So he is from Rimview, Nicole White and Jeffrey White, who attended here. His, her, that was her son. And so it was neat to catch up with some of those kids and see them. Um, to see youth who used to attend our church become youth pastors and they have their kids there. So that was an amazing thing to see that, yes, the work that we are doing in our kids it is increasing, and they are still doing the work. Um, the, since it was my first time, just to be able to just get an overview of how the camp worked, um, just being able to see kids build friendships, not just with the kids at the church they went with, but connecting with kids at other um, churches and building friendships that way. Um, and then just seeing kids play, not being on their phones, but playing nine square, playing volleyball, going and playing games um, at the tables, um, just seeing them just so much full of energy and just worshiping God. The worship was so powerful, so reviving to be able to see just kids just raise their hands towards him. Um, and so those were kind of a few of my highlights. They really touched on a lot of different pieces, just the, our, our identity. Um, and, you know, that failure is a moment. It's never a person. And what would that look like if we labeled ourselves with our worst um, moment? But, uh, you know, God is faithful despite our failures. Um, and then what's in our bag, right? Are there things that we are carrying around that is not of God? Um, And that was one of the things that they talked about, that we need to remember the deeds of the Lord and fully surrender what we are holding on to so that you can allow the Holy Spirit to work abundantly in your life. So thank you for this experience. I am signed up for next year. So be ready. (laughs) Oh, I just want to get up here and say thank you uh, for being able to go to Zona. It was very fun. It was my last year, and I'm uh, really glad that I did missions with David. That was a lot of fun. I wish I would have done that a lot sooner. Really glad that I was also able to go with Alex Fisher. Uh, he used to come here. That was really fun, being able to have him be there and hang out with him one last time at Zona. Uh, 
It was a lot of fun. I really loved the messages that we had and that the uh, James, learning James with James, that was a lot of fun. Uh, also being able to talk about KJ. KJ was very fun. That was a lot of fun. Uh, that was really it, though. I mean, like, there was a lot of stuff that went on in between, like, games, missions. We were all missions, like, pretty much every day, except for Thursday. Thursday was short, very short, but we all loved it. It was great. <laughs> we just planted plants on Thursday, but it was really fun. Uh, loved being able to see the difference that we made at different uh, camps that we went to, like a... Uh, 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 Hidden shelter or what? Operation Safe House. That's what it was. And being able to like move their sheds and clean it out for them and see what they need and don't need and being able to help kids that are either uh, like homeless or have problems at home that need somewhere else to stay and being able to help them uh, be able to get clothes and shoes and socks and underwear and whatever else they needed. Uh, also being able to go help other churches rebuild their church so they have a better safe place for their children to come and worship God. It was a lot of fun. So that's all I got to say. Thank you. First of all, it's already been expressed by others. By the way, um, I'm going to brag on Christian Challenge. Miranda was always at the door whenever we would go and eat, and she always had a smile just like she did up here. She was good. Adrian, I got to see Adrian all the time. We'd, every time we'd stop by and see hugs. Scott, I don't know who this guy is. He came back a different person. I don't know, you know, um, because he was talking about it one day and then he didn't do it. He said, oh, I'm going to do it before this. And he came back the same. And the next morning, it's like, holy smokes, you know, who is this guy driving around the cart? Because that's, that was Scott's job. Um, but um, first of all, as has already been expressed, thank you, um, church, uh, for supporting um, this ministry. Um, the opportunity the kids had to go and, and, and be part of for a day shorter than what it used to be. Um, but still, you know, God blessed it. Um, so thank you for support as expressed with your guys financially and with your prayers. Um, it was definitely um, felt. Um, it was a different week um, in some ways, especially when you start out the week knowing that when you get home, knowing ahead of time that the um, JT was going to resign. That was a tough week um, to be still encouraging to the kids and because they had no idea. Um, but to get to love on them, um, it's awesome. So thank you for allowing your kids to go. That's always been a, even Benjamin over there, you know. Um, it was always a privilege to get to have to do that, and I've got to do that, I don't know how many years, um, to go to Zona. Um, a long time and it's like it's expressed it's kind of a reunion in many ways because some of the some of the leaders that are there some of the they were kids and now they're leaders and some of them are they may they they are what makes it happen and continue that that ministry and and, and on time on growing um and by the way uh, michelle you know she's bragging about her backpack if you needed anything it was in there um, so she was, she was a provider. Thank you, Michelle. Um, but being in missions, um, we were short an extra day. Usually we would have four days to do missions. We had three. Um, sometimes some of the events that we had were, were more opportunity for the kid to serve. Some of them, there wasn't a lot to do, but that was okay. Um, my opportunity um, in my role and myself, we had... So in our, we had our van, we would take our van, there was 12 of us in our van, and that included our, we had a challenge student with us. Um, and then there was a, a lady from Tucson, so we were the adult in the group sometimes, and then uh, um, to do. And so um, when we would go, um, we would go to a location, like the first location, as Diego kind of talked about, we went to a church, it was called Liberty Church, it was over near March Air Force Base. Um, March Air Force Base is kind of out of the picture now. It's a training, not much. It's not used much anymore um, due to cutbacks and military deal. And so that community has really dropped off. Um, but yet we had opportunity there to paint and to scrape and stuff like that. The kids did, all the kids did an awesome job. On that day, there were two churches there, two teams um, to serve there. 
Um, and then we had conversation, opportunity to tell him, you know, sometimes it didn't seem like you were doing much, but even those little things is what made a difference for them. That was the important thing because you got to do. Um, second day, as Diego mentioned, we went to a place, Operation Safe House. Um, we hadn't been there since 2019. Um, the lady there that runs the place, I didn't know if she was going to still be there. Her name was Dana. Um, I got some time to chat with Dana. It was kind of a reunion in that sense because we had spent many times in the previous conversating. You know, we had a time to minister. Sometimes in the past, the kids that were there, um, for whatever reason they were there, they would come out and they would play basketball. They didn't come out much this last time, but that was okay. Um, so we had that opportunity to help them reorganize some things. We took stuff out of a, a like a big old um, storage building and everything was all scattered out. They would go through sort of back and all sorts of items that was for the benefit of those that came there. And then we stored it back in and we had to get back. So um, we were there, we were usually, we were off campus, so we didn't have lunch um, on campus. We would leave at, um, I don't know, 10-ish, between 10, 30 or somewhere there about. And we would had to, we had to be back by 2.30. And then we had a debrief time where all the, all the kids that went on missions and leaders we would come to a location and we would talk about our opportunities we have. Um, but Diego mentioned about the last day, um, our last opportunity to serve. Um, so there's, like I said, there was 12 of us on our team. Um, it, was, it, was, it was called, it's titled Keep uh, Riverside Clean and Beautiful. And so it's, we meet at a park, we go from there, and each buddy, everybody had something different. There was some that went to did painting and clean up graffiti. There was some that did some various weeding and stuff well our opportunity is we followed this gentleman out to a location um, i think he had i don't know maybe 30 plants that needed to be planted um, that lasted about 30 minutes and we were done but that was okay because god had another appointment for us so on that day um, everybody's talking you know and we were kind of tired of the sack lunches um, because that's what we went out with and so we said we said well let's go to Cain's. So we went to Cain, so that was with the one picture. Um, so good time to, to spend together. Um, as the other leader and I, we were spending, we were chatting about things. Um, Christopher, um, the Christian Challenge leader, um, we happened to turn around and look, and he, every time when we were away, they would have their Bible study. And he's over there, and he's got the kids all rounded up in Cain's, and they're doing their Bible study. I said, awesome. Um, kind of started out a little bit different with him because he was new. And so we, on the first day, we go to this location, and, and there's a gentleman there. He says, well, who's in charge? And so he's, they're looking around, and I just went, he is, because that's their opportunity. That's their responsibility. And he's looking like, you know, I don't know. Yeah, no, you're, you're the guy. And he did an amazing job. He did an amazing job. He just, everything he picked it up every day. He would make sure on task with the study. He would make sure that the kids needed stuff. Um, Scott, Christopher did a great job. So um, awesome for that. Um, my day started at about 6 and ended about midnight. Um, I had each, we had apartments, which was awesome. Uh, because we didn't have to go to this big community shower where all these nasty kids leave their junk everywhere. Um, <laughs> They had it, they would take their stuff out of there and they would go to their room and my room was right here and it was awesome. These guys, so I had Cameron and Jonas um, and these guys had come in at nighttime and so we were in about 10, 30, 11, well, usually 11, 11, 30. Um, they decided they needed to shower at that time. Okay, so you can see all the light coming under the door, the lights in the hall and everywhere else. And I have my door shut, but there's still lots of light. Um, somehow or another, I fell asleep. Um, but with that being said, Cameron decided he needed to, you know, the joke is, and I do snore. Um, <laughs> not bragging, it's just a fact. Um, so um, ask Karen, right? <laughs> so... So Cameron decided he needed to record me snoring. And I says, and he could have came in my room and I wouldn't even know. Well, he did slip his phone under the door. And there's, he's got, he says, man, I recorded you snoring. I said, really? He said, yeah, he played it for me. And so 
Okay, well, save it, man. You know, I don't know, maybe, maybe it'll help. You know that calm thing, you know, that noise you can get on your phone? There you go, man. Listen to it. It'll help you fall asleep. Um, and then, and then um, one, one afternoon, um, so we would get back at 3.30 from missions. I know I'm jumping, bouncing around. But we would get back for, at 3.30 from missions. Or 2.30, we would have a debrief. And so we had at 3.30. So usually I would go shower. Every once in a while, I would take maybe a, a fifth, I don't know, 30-minute, an hour nap or whatever, and then shower and then head back out for the evening. Um, Jonas um, was in the bathroom, and he was there a long time, you know. And so I just thought, I'm tired. I'm going to get Jonas, you know, later on. And so I said, so, hey, man, were you, you okay in there? You know, and, and I said, so we were joking with him. I said, what, you know, he said, were you stuck on the toilet or I don't know. You know, he says, yeah, he says, uh, yeah, I was Googling it and, you know, trying to find out how to get unstuck off the toilet <laughs> or YouTubing. He says, just finding out how to get off there on, on YouTube. So I says, yeah, I believe it, man. You were there for a while. So, um, but it, it's, I, I, just, I just say this. It's, it's a great opportunity to get to serve your kids. Hannah, you know, Reuben. You know, I've got to, I've got to, they've come through in the past. It's a great opportunity to get to serve. Um, the Lord um, has given me the health, um, the ability to, to do um, for a week and, and get them home safely as well. You know, um, it is a blessing. It has been a blessing. Um, like Michelle, if, if the Lord so allows me to, to participate next year, I'm, I'm in. You know, as long as the Lord blesses me with that. Um, but it is, you, guys, you guys have a bunch of good young people. They, they, they were amazing. They were good. Um, nobody decided they needed to burn their skin with ice and salt um, and stuff like that. And nobody got broken bones. We've had broken bones. And, you know, it was, it was, it was a great week. Um, uh, I wish, I wish JT would have done this. There's a song they did. Um, it's called the, the church clap, you know? Um, and, and so they would play it. They would play it in during, um, a lot of times during worship, but in the evening they're playing it. Um, we got some sassy girls in here. I'm just telling you right now, um, because if the music started playing, kids from wherever they were doing, they would run over to where the music was, and they would do that song. And then once it was done, they'd go back to playing the games, you know. Some of them like to sling their head a little bit and put a little more motion into it, you know, and it was just fun. Um, there is a video of you, by the way. I th yeah. Um, but, but the kids, but it's, the, but it's just what the kids got to do, and, and it was fun. They had a great time, and, and the fellowship and such like that. Um, and again, watching the kids interact with other youth groups and stuff, um, our kids did a wonderful job with that. They would always, you would always see them intermingling with other groups and stuff like that. So the relationship building that they did, um, good job, guys. You know, keep doing that. You know, that's, that's, there's strength in numbers and there's strength in you guys getting out of your comfort zone and, and, and just developing those relationships. Is it going to work? Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I have a video of the Um, but thank you. I, I'm just, I'll just say again, thank you, church. Um, for making this happen for us and giving us the opportunity to do. And, and I so much wish that we would like you encourage this morning and like you encourage this morning. I, I wish there was more people here in, during this time to support the kids, um, whether it was for children's camp, um, for the rest of what everything went on, um, the youth and such like that. We need to work on that as, our, as a church. We really need to work on that my opinion, and, uh, and, and be more involved in their lives and, and 
I know I'm saying you don't support them, but being more of, of a face to the church because that's what the church is. It's the face of that person. Um, we need to pray about that really hard and God can do it. So do I need to keep talking? Um, Benjamin? No? Cameron? You know? Annalise? You good? How about a big hand to the Lord, because we know that God just did great things in VBS and Zona and, you know, Kids Camp. We still need that there's a need, but God is the one who completes that need, amen. So how about we stand up and let's get ready to just sing a song and then let's go eat some ice cream, because I don't know about you, but I'm craving some ice cream right now, amen.
on his feet, I wanna do the type of shows that the Lord wanna see. What I mean, if I can make the whole church clap, but ain't a clap in the heavens, then that clap just a clap, clap. For his son glorified, sin mortified, the Holy Spirit going word that truth ain't watered down. It's sound doctrine, it's birth in the coming out. Nothing wrong with singing loud, but that ain't where the power sound. On the church, church has been clapping that weak sermons, leaving the weak hurt. No one's changed by Sunday service. Check what you be affirming Cause the church can be full of members But empty in conversion